everybody. Welcome back to Sex, Drugs, and the Epigenome. We took a nice long break uh, for the holidays. I think our last episode was right before we had a long break for the holidays. And things have been cooking over at, on Dr. Seeds' world and the SSRP Institute. Um, it has been a whirlwind start of the year, right, Doc? It's great to be back. Yeah, it is. Thank you, Karen. Uh, it's been a it's been a lot of work the last couple of years, and we had uh, we've been busy at this beginning of 2022, and I don't see it stopping. I'm I'm excited. It's it's infectious, and it's um, it's uh, pa- the pa- everybody's kind of jumping into this passionate state of tell me more about the cell. Let me, let me know more. I don't, I can't get enough doc. What, where do we go with this? And, uh, that just fuels the fire for everyone. And that, that just makes it so exciting that everyone has been, I just see this revival in, in docs and, in care in, in, in our professional, um, um, uh, caretakers here that, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a doc. It can be a physical therapist. It can be an athletic trainer. It can be a nurse practitioner. It can be a chiropractor. It's all of us together. Finally, I love seeing us working as a team, as a group of people all interested in the same thing. And that's learning everything we can about the cell to do everything we can as a team to to do what? Improve patient outcomes, improve how we work against the clock and that clock is ticking every minute. And that's, I think, I think that's kind of our motto here. You know, every minute that clock is ticking, we're at the SSRP, we're working on getting this message out um, about the cell and what we can do to help make that better, make that cell better to, to not necessarily live longer, which I, I don't really, I'm not a big proponent of, of promising that, but I'm a, I'm an absolute proponent of promising if we look better at how we manage the cell and efficiencies of using substrates, glucose, fatty acids, uh, amino acids, and so forth in our diet and what we do with exercise and what we do with peptides and what we do with small molecules and how we manipulate these for the benefit of improvement of the cell, then there is no absolute no doubt in my mind, and I will back it hundred percent. We can improve aging to where your genetic your genetics work better for you, and that that you do have those golden years. You do have every day better. You do make your life better, and that's a strong statement. And then you know, do other things come with that? Do other things come with does does the lifespan increase? I don't. I'm going to tell you, I'm not smart enough to know that. There are some people that claim they're smart enough to know that, and God bless them. They're they're pushing the envelope forward. But I'm I'm going to tell you what I do know at this date, and what I've proven, and what I'm doing with myself. I mean, I'm doing this with myself, and 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 many others. So let's see where this continues to go. the The fever is is incredible, and it's. Uh, just like I said, it's infectious. So thank you, Karen, for making this all possible and putting all these people together and, uh, and driving this engine for all of us, because it's, you know, without people like yourself that are so dedicated to getting real messages out and, and, and really validating this whole area of, um, of improvement of the cell is just incredible. Um, uh, and all of my, you know, all of my scientists out there love you and all it's like we're bringing together research and medicine. It's like it's it's coming together. And and I I can't thank you enough for making it fun and, and making it, you know, bringing us down to planet Earth to really talk about it the right way where we're sometimes we talk above the language and, you know, really making it relevant that that I think is why this is really happening. So thank you. Oh gosh, doc, that is all you. And, and that's such a great way to encompass what's happened in the beginning of this year. I think we, you just wrapped up NAD summit back in January and that was in your favorite place in the world in Vail. Uh, but what was, what was like a big revel? It was, it was an epitome for me. 
um, at NAD Summit, where we realized how much we simply don't know and how that is, there's a, there's a respect to that. There's, there's a massive amount of respect to people who understand, Oh goodness, we, we only are scratching the surface and you provided that respect to people. Like that was what I thought was so great. But then my big aha at that summit was you're known as the peptide guy, right? That's what everyone writes to us for. And we, we answer a lot of questions about peptides, but you've just given us a scratch of the surface of what it really is. And that is cellular medicine. And it goes beyond just peptides. Peptides is just one of the tools in your toolbox and all these other things. And you drop so many things on us at NAD summit. And I'm not going to reveal them here because I think we'll go off topic, but that was the biggest, like, whoa, we are just seeing what Dr. Seeds has to offer us. And that's what today's episode is kind of dedicated to is like, they, uh, we have a lot of docs and um, nurse and, and NPs and PACs, and they're all, they're all following what we're doing. And this new thing, this senescence mastermind coming up in April is like, oh, it's an anti-aging summit. Okay. I, I kind of get it. But then I, I almost think that I, I almost think we have to dedicate this episode, Doc, if you're good with it, to describing, oh, this is a whole new ball game. This is like nothing they've ever seen before, just like NAD Summit was, and that there will be new things that you'll figure out and possibly other things that that um, will come together. But this is that next step after NAD Summit, right, Doc? Yeah, I think absolutely. I mean, all of these things are in stages. I mean, it, the the beginning of of me, the I mean, I, I'm fine with the peptide recognition, and and that's wonderful because I, I I you know that that was the way. That's the way I introduced cellular medicine in, into the physician world at the beginning because that was the only way I saw that as a tar of a way to start bringing in biochemistry and molecular biology and quantum physics, so forth into the field through something that were these, there were these buzzwords, peptides that were started. And that was easy because I was like, well, geez, I'm, I'm all right. I've just been doing this for a long time. And this is the, this is the best way to introduce these, the, these terms and these peptides and to, to start, if, if I can get people excited, they'll start latching on to these pathway ideas, these mechanisms. And, and that was the, that was really the, the madness in my method was to, was to get behind that and then start showing, Hey, this is, I I'm not about just, Oh, take this, do this. And that's how you get people better because you don't become much of a physician or a practitioner. If that's all you do. Um, I'm just going to tell you, you're not going to get very far with that. And I, but I'm, Hey, that's all that's okay with me too. If that's what you do, then, then God bless you. You're helping people also, but I think you're missing out if you're not looking for real solutions and using your brain to figure these out. And that's, that's what gave me this Avenue. And this is why senescence is just another is is the next step. It's like there's been a method in the way we've gone through this years of planning that I've laid out from day one. It's why everything builds on every topic. It's why the you hear from our fellows they keep going, "Oh my gosh, now I understand why we took that step. Now I understand why you fed a little bit of NAD in every conference because now it's just all the light bulbs exploded on me. It's no different with senescence and what we started with introducing senescence because nobody talked about senescence before. Nobody talked about it before. Nobody knew how to bring it into the rel into this relative space of understanding uh, cellular medicine. And, and, and this is why it's so important to keep bringing these subjects in, but to bring in the relevance now of Guys, this is so much more than anti-aging. It's so much more. It, it's the senescence is the on is the is the process that if we aren't all on board and and pushing forward and understanding every aspect of senescence and how it's different, how it's different, 
in every specialty, but yet it's the same, meaning, well, how could it be the same and different in every specialty? Well, this is a common denominator that continues. Senescence is a word, you know, that used to, where a cell basically just stops. It, it, it doesn't perform the aspects of being a normal cell anymore. This could be, let's say, an endothelial cell and in, in, in um, a vessel in the heart. And this is something they're studying in cardiology where an endothelial cell becomes senescent. Or it could be an astrocyte in the brain or a microglial cell in the brain that becomes senescent. And they're studying that in neuro, neurology and neurodegenerative diseases. Or it could be a immune cell, a macrophage that has become senescent that we're studying in autoimmune disease. Or it could be a, um, uh, a, a, a cell in the glomerulus or, or a podocyte in the kidney that has become senescent that is creating disease in the kidney. What I'm trying to say is we really need to understand that senescence can is the driver of these processes of disease in every field of medicine. And that is tremendous. That's a statement that everybody should be going, oh my gosh, I need to know. I really should know more about this. Well, if you understand the general concepts of senescence and you understand what it does relative, what its purpose is in disease, which we're going to spend time on, but more importantly, you understand that it's different. It's different in every one of these fields, which I think we'll talk about here in just a little bit about this senescence associated secretory phenotype and how it's different. That is very important to understand. And that's what we're going to be doing in this. Oh, you're bringing up a picture. Okay. Well, you, you're bringing up a picture that says, you know, pictures are worth a thousand words. And I, I really love what, you know, doing what lecturing and all of these aspects of teaching have taught me that people love pictures and love to relate to pictures. And I get it. And it, it makes sense. I mean, I'd rather see pictures than listen to me talk too. Um, and it, and these pictures say so much. And, and in particular, this cell, let's just say this is a senescent cell that Karen has brought up here. And it, it means that it's just stopped replicating. It stopped replicating from becoming that same endothelial cell, let's say, in the, in the heart. And it's, it's now because it stopped replicating for many reasons that, will, that, that I think you need to understand. I think you need to know why it happens. I think you need to know the progression of it. I think you need to know then what it produces. And it produces these SASPs, senescence associated secretory phenotype, meaning that particular cell in that particular area, it has a phenotype now that it's going to produce these interleukins, these cytokines, these proteases. These are cell signaling agents that are going to affect other cells and in fact, other cells like itself. So it can, it can affect immune cells and how they um, control immune surveillance. They can control immune cells and how they control in, inv invasions of viruses and bacteria and fungi and so forth. They can progress tumor cells. They can be meaning that SASP, that senescent cell could be an oncogenic induced cell, meaning it be, it's a very powerful senescent cell and it can induce tumors. Um, it can change other cells into what they typically do and how they're, they're programmed to, you know, to send signals and send out their proteins and so forth. It can change tissue. Um, it can reinforce senescence on other tissues and itself. It can, um, and it, it can, it can also cause other hormonal senescence uh, to be created. Um, and, and then it can cause like what it shows over here about organ fibrosis and you see fibrosis in the liver, you see it in the kidney, you see it in the heart, uh, you see it in the lungs, pulmonary idiopathic uh, fibrosis. I mean, it, it, fibrosis is like the secondary aspect of senescence. And that's actually you know, when we started this topic, the topic was um, um, fibrosis. It was, and it's still part of this, but it's, it's senescence leading to fibrosis and people understanding fibrotic disease is all related to senescence. So senescence is so encompassing that 
this is a, a this is a nice way to just show that guys the more we understand about this and how this process has everything to do with understanding how we're going to improve our patient care and, and the fact that it's changing rapidly, we're understanding more and more and more every year, uh, actually every month, there are papers coming out. And as I've said, this is the hottest topic in every medical field, the hottest topic. Why wouldn't you want to be an expert in senescence? Why wouldn't you want to know everything? Because, because I'm challenging you, if you know you, if you know and understand senescence, it's taking you one step further to being able to, 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 to play a significant role as a caretaker in all fields of medicine because you are relevant in understanding senescence because it has everything to do with that disease process in that particular vertical column of, like I like to call it, of cardiology, orthopedics, pulmonology, um, ophthalmology, nephrology, uh, gastroenterology, all of these things, psychiatry. I mean, think of that. Think of that. I mean, I, I get so excited when I can, can, I can, I, I like talking to researchers in other fields and finding the similarities we have in discussion and, and light bulbs just go off when we're talking about information. And it's like, they get excited to know that, wow, Physicians really have uh, an understanding of what I'm doing. Uh, this is awesome. Can I talk to you more about this? And this is how discussion starts. This is how this is how medicine changes. This is how outcome. These are how outcomes improve. How could you not be excited about something like this? And you know, I bring a lot of passion, I think, to some of my conferences and to most of them. And this one is going to be, uh, I'm, it's going to be exuded to the max. I, because I get so excited in everything that I've, you know, I, I felt a long time ago and, and told all of my, my, the people that I've, I've trained that, hey, guys, this is one thing you need to keep your, your head on watching this information coming out on senescence before, before even people, you know, I used to talk about senescence and quiescence at the beginning of, I don't know, when I first started the, the peptide stuff and talking about just those little concepts and, and look where we've gone now and to, and to now how many people I think are, are doing a great job in bringing out the relevance of this in all of their fields. And, and so this is what we're going to try to do. And um, I've talked a lot here in the, and I haven't even <laughs> let you, I haven't let you even ask me a question, but you kind of led me down this road of where I am. So this is like, it's like why every mastermind keeps building on its own to the next topic. And why I, I just believe, um, you know, methodology and, 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 and planning makes such a impact when you've built this information in little pieces all the way along. And then you get to put it together in a way that no one's probably thought about before. And, and now they, they, now they get to kind of see more of not that I know how to think and not that I know how to, you know, I, I don't claim to be, I don't claim to know everything, but I, I just want to give people some of my thoughts of how I put some of this together and, and how I use it to make people better and, and how I keep thinking, well, there's got to be more and how I ask more questions. And the beauty of these summits and, and, and masterminds when we do this is that we do open up discussion and we do bring people together to talk about it. That's that's a tremendous stage to 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 be that vulnerable always to be that vulnerable and let people be and, and but that just shows you I think we're all very humble about where we're at and and that we're all trying to improve and and we don't have all the answers but we have some ideas. So and, wow, Doc, this is so beyond what Google even gave me while I was preparing for for this discussion is. Is you know I, I hear the buzzwords that you say that 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 I hear uh, from other places and that's you know senescent cells are the zombie cells um, senescence is 
the hallmark of aging, right? These are all things that, that you can Google and you'll find anywhere. But what you're describing, Doc, it, it, it's so much deeper than just describing this as a zombie cell. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it's the start of, it sounds like a lot of really terrible diseases and diseases that are untreatable today. And by understanding where those processes go wrong, then we may have a chance to, to make some real changes here. Um, well, look at, look at, look at what we did with NAD. I mean, we talked yeah. about NAD for two days, but we brought in, you know, if you want to bring in some really relevant points that really change the ideas of how you think about NAD, it has everything to do with how senescence influences the CD8 cell receptors on immune cells, in particular macrophages, um, and how that influences the utilization of NAD from the salvage pool. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's really, these are, these are monumental, I think, processes that you cannot ignore and that you need to know to understand how you're using some of these precursors of NAD to make them relevant. If you don't understand that, then you have no business using any of these precursors of NAD. I mean, I think we made that pretty clear. Uh, and, and I think understanding that and then going further now with these ideas, that was a stepping stone leading into this senescence talk of showing people, hey guys, there's a lot of thing, there's a lot of, uh, of, of processes you need to be aware of when you look at redox and uh, and and nad and let's really break it down so we understand it and understand redox cycling and and the and the aspects of the um salvage pathway and how where these precursors fit but do they really fit in every scenario and we made that pretty pretty clear the answer is no but they can be valuable tools, just like IV NAD or nasal NAD. Any of those things can be very valuable if you understand the environment you're using them in. And most importantly, this concept of senescence and upregulation of CD8, CD38 uh, receptors on immune cells and other cells. If you didn't get that concept, uh, you're going to fail in how you move forward and in, in doing anything with, uh, with NAD. Um, that's my opinion. Um, it, but, but I think we made that very clear and, and, and the research has been, been beautifully um, portrayed, you know, describing those, those mechanisms and issues and questions that we all need to keep searching for. So that takes us to this next step of just, it's not just about, you know, how everybody just thinks NAD is something it's like, well, senescence is the bigger concept. And it's, it's like, well, what plays into senescence? Well, everything does just kind of how we showed NAD plays into oxidation, glycation, methylation, inflammation, dysregulation, hormonal dis uh, dysregulation, you know, like it, it's the same thing with senescence. It plays all of those roles are significant in in aging and disease, but senescence is what takes it forward. Senescence is the key to all of these things. And, and again, it's just like, uh, I hope everybody understands. We'll talk about this and we'll go down these paths and make it very clear. I hope and, and make it, make it a stronger case for people being much more educated in this world of senescence, but they'll all, we'll also make it realize that again, this is another part in the toolbox of working to improve um, a lot of things that may be going wrong because you still have to work on redox. You still have to work on methylation. Maybe you still have to work, you know, you have to work on all the little parts, but you also have to work on senescence. So yeah, I get, I get really passionate about this because it's uh, it's just so exciting. You, you wake up every morning and there's something new written on this and you just go, Oh my gosh, really? I really thought I had this down and now you now there's more to this and, but that's great. I mean, that's what makes this so exciting. And yeah. I can't even tell that you were stuck on a flight for the last 24 hours. 
Doc. This yeah, woke you up. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a weird question for you. And yeah. um, it's so so senescence is most often associated with with aging and of course older groups. But can this happen in youth? Well, senescence is necessary. So it's a necessary part of life. Mm. We have we have sen senescence is necessary in development, and it's necessary in injury repair. So it's a, it's an it's a known biological process that we need. And it's a biological process that gets out of control. Um, so it's, you know, we need, we need these, we need this to happen in growth, in development. And then we also need it to happen in injury and repair. And then as we're aging and then as disease progresses, it becomes a, it can become a problem. So hopefully we'll define that better for people to understand, because that's a real concept that I don't think enough people do realize that it's something, it's absolutely something we live with and we need. That's why you don't go and wipe out all your senescent cells because you need it. <laughs> um, now there are different, there, there are different theories in potentially doing that where you only do it a couple days here, a couple days there. And I think there's a lot of valid um, thought behind that too. Uh, I think there's lots of ways to do this. And, I, and that's what we're going to discuss. I hope we give people a real robust, strong, strong um, understanding and some real tools of utilization with this. Uh, uh, because I think this is one of the most important aspects in, in, in helping to solve, not just improve disease, but, but solve it, cure it, fix it. Um, and, and that leads me to, I don't know if you're going to soon to close this session or because I've said so much, but this is where the coolest part of the future is with this, with senescence of where we're getting into, you know, cellular medicine is so advanced in many stages. And, and we're, we're talking about every stage because every stage is relevant in how we treat patients. But as we get up there into really looking at, at DNA and RNA and, and not about nothing about like, not this stuff about meth, you know, uh, methylation and, um, and, and looking at aging at the, at the clock, none of, none of that stuff. Cause that really doesn't change how we treat people. But, but what does is where we're going with messenger RNAs and, and actually the next steps of antisense oligonucleotides of where we can absolutely get around genetic defects and change splicing variants of um, genetic problems and actually change the, these, these translation transcriptions of proteins, translations of RNA, we can change messaging with antisense oligonucleotides. That's, that is a tremendous statement. Um, best case and example I always bring up is look what we've done with spinal muscle atrophy, a disease that was before the age of two, if you could not get to, you could, we couldn't do anything. I mean, that, that, was, a, that was a horrible progression of disease. And, and now we can cure it. And that more people don't know about that because of what we can do with changing these splice variants and so forth by, by making a new signaling process that that is where it's at. It's not at this clock stuff. It's, I mean, can't do anything with that, but you can, when you actually take these higher steps of really trying to, to work with the genetic code, that's, that's where medicine's going. And that has everything to do with senescence also because there are, there are, a, 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 there are many of these genetic defects that maybe we can't change. Maybe they don't have splicing variants. Maybe we can't change them at this higher level, but they all have senescence related to the progression of their disease. And we can go at a higher level with some of these messenger RNAs and other things that we can make to go at that senescent cell specific where it is. Remember specific how I said where it is and, and what it's created. And we can, we can look at improving that, that, that gives hope for people that gives, 
tremendous, um, I, I think that drives all of us to knowing that, gosh, there's so many tiers to how we can go about treating people and improving their lives. The more we know, the more we understand about these mechanisms. So, yeah, I'm excited about oh, it. Oh, cool, um, Doc. Yeah. Yeah. What you you've done you've done a lot for for my loved ones regarding that stuff. So I have to say, this is uh, how much this man knows about things that are uncurable is, is crazy. Um, but, <laughs> um, we won't, we'll save that for a different episode, but I have, I, w- I do want to touch upon one thing about the, the topic of like the future of, of sen- senescence research. And that is the utilization of stem cells, which is a really, um, it, it's kind of a demonized topic, right? Google hates it. In fact, they will put you on a blacklist and your website will not rank on anything. And your website won't even become visitable if, you use the word stem cell in your language, which is so tragic because there's just so many utilizations of stem cells outside of what they're demonizing it for, uh, which is more on the the embryonic side. And that seems to be where the biggest problems um, um, come into play. But I mean, Doc, if if you can speak just briefly to, to your stem cell research and how how it's advancing so much. And there was just a recent, just a couple months ago on the use of stem cells in knees and joints, right doc. And I show that to you. I'm like, Hey, is this you? <laughs> that was in the wall street journal. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that you know, with any new, uh, how do you say this? I mean, it, I mean, look at all the controversy of what's happened with COVID. Um, oh Yeah. Uh, you're gonna, this is advancement. I mean, this is what happens, Um, but, but the research and all of the due diligence and the great bench work that's being done around all the stem cell research is leading has led to great improvements in, in where we can go with, with also, you know, um, improving patient outcomes and, and, the senescence plays a significant role in, in how the stem cells work and, and how they can be better utilized and, and, and actually understanding more about senescence made us smarter in utilizing stem cells and, and you, and, and, and making sure that stem cells were really ready to go and to do their job in cell signaling And maybe that's kind of what we've learned, you know, instead of giving people these, yeah, yes, stem cells can change into other cells. And yes, in the right environment with the right scaffolding, you know, something holding it where it needs to be, it can potentially do that. But we're at a stage right now where we're using them more for their signaling abilities Mm -hmm. and, and, and their capabilities in repairing, because that's what they, that's what they do in the body. You know, they, they do more signaling and repairing than they do morphing into another cell. Um, but they do, I mean, they they do do that too, but it, it's more complex, but, but that's why we've gotten smarter at this. And, and um, all I can say is, is this is where you got to kind of put your head down and just keep pushing forward for all the right reasons with all the right information and, um, and I, I, you're, you're seeing, there's a reason it's continued and it's continued to move forward because something's happening and it's making changes. I mean, things don't just progress because of a word or because you see it, you, you do see a lot of, okay, here's an interesting thing. You see a lot of supplements come and go because they really don't do anything. You see a lot of concepts come and go because they really don't do anything you know, diet concepts, they don't do anything. They don't long-term, but the things that do work long-term are always there and keep getting better. And that's understanding what more about calorie restriction, more about fasting, more about exercise. Exercise doesn't go away if it did. Right. That'd be nice. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't go away. It's all of these things are here for a reason and continue, continue continuing to move forward. And, and, and unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, you know, we do need regulation. We do need stipulations on how things are done, but then there, then 
unfortunately some of those things work against us because they keep they keep things restricted too much it's 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 hard um i don't have those answers all i do is just put my head down and just keep driving forward and, and looking for how i make it work that's that's my job that's what i can do well so um so yes stem cells are i think a tremendous part of this process of, of senescence i think there are the absolute continue will continue to be the future of of, of um, also of treatment and medicine in every field um and we're i've just been fortunate to be successful in, in what i do with them and and i think it's because i understand what you need to do to utilize them correctly and it's it's i think we get caught up too you know we used to get caught up in the concept of stem cells that you had to make more of them and you had to have a lot of them. And I, I think I've just not myself, but many of us have changed that idea that it isn't about how many it's how powerful is that one stem cell? Mm. How powerful is the signaling of that stem cell? How resistant is that stem cell against the environment you're putting it in to, to, to do its job in signaling? So that's where it comes down to. It's really, and that's where, that's why you have to have this. I think you have to have a broader knowledge of cellular medicine. This is why, why am I successful? This is because I, because I put these things together and, and, and this is why senescence, you need to know senescence and understand it better because this is the future. So, um, so I have tremendous respect for all those guys pushing forward in that in in the field of uh, stem cells and all that great work that that all of them are that they are doing and I and I I thank them for including me in some of their conferences and letting me give my interpretation of what I do. Um, I can't you know I, I'm I'm humbled by that and I I just think that you'll continue to see that moving forward as we have, as, as we've shared some of the, uh, some of these papers, uh, as of late and, and it's just not going to stop. So there you go. I could keep going with that too, Karen. <laughs> I'm glad that we ended it there because that's actually going to be the topic of our next episode. We are going to talk about all the stem cell therapies that we know of that, that, uh, that are kind of crazy, um, kind of crazy and cool and very, very effective. Uh, I will give my own account of some stem cell things that, that I've gone through and, uh, happy to talk about it. So yes. And doc, I love that you mentioned that, that things come and go and in, in fads and phases, because absolutely medicine is still, still moving towards stem cell. And there's, there's conferences based upon all around stem cells, um, all over the world, um, which we'll be heading to, um, speaking well, of well, which, wait, but, well, wait, remember remember when i started first talking about peptides it was oh that's a fad oh yes. that's a, oh that's gonna be that's just that's not real medicine oh that's and it, it and it just it, it really was something where i just had to sit back and say gosh i go my job is i've got to do a good job of explaining that it isn't about the word peptide it's about this cell signaling it's about what are we trying to accomplish it's what does the cell know and 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 that drove me i think that made me better at, at messaging and 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 look at where we are now i mean nobody ever heard of a peptide before when we first started talking about this and now look it's all over the place it's in everywhere. cosmetics it's everywhere it's in and, my drinks and and well and, <laughs> and and we started off our conferences saying this was going to happen i mean we should go back and find and get these little clips of things we discussed and, and just show to validate on a time schedule. Hey, guys, we told you this was going to happen. We said this; these were going to be the steps people were going to take. And then, and then, unfortunately, you know, you do you get people that really try to manipulate that just for making money and stuff. And that that's what makes it worse mm -hmm. for people. But but you know what? Um, that that's part of what we it's that's in the field. That's what we have to work with. And it's, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. Awesome. Well, folks, Dr. Seeds will be speaking in Portugal coming up soon. So we are so excited to follow him there. Uh, he's speaking at a conference in Lisbon that we are so excited about and so honored that he, he was selected and, and the panel of people 
the caliber of people that are up there with Dr. Seeds and his cellular medicine advancement is truly remarkable. So we're so excited for that coming up. Um, also, Senescence Mastermind coming up, Senescence Summit, for those of you joining us virtually, that's going to be April 22nd through the 23rd in Malibu. That is at the Four Seasons Westlake Village. It's right next to Malibu, just in case you didn't know where Westlake Village was. That's right off of 40 minutes past LA. So my hood, I like it. It is a gorgeous hotel. Um, certainly one of our favorites. Uh, can't wait to see everybody there, our fellows there, and of course our new faces and those of you joining us online. While this is primarily a physician practitioner audience, we have opened it up starting this year to anyone who is interested in learning about their own health and wellness. So just because you don't understand what's happening today or in, in April 22nd through the 23rd, doesn't mean you won't get it by the next couple of times because apparently that's how the process works, right, Doc? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, I hope to see everybody there. Keep sending us your questions um, on this podcast. Send them over to info at seeds.md. That's info at S E E D S dot M D. And of course, we want to end with our medical disclaimer. Everything that you hear and see today on today's episode is for informational purposes only. Please discuss any of these treatments or supplements or uh, modes of, of treatment with your physician uh, before moving forward with them. That said, Dr. Seeds, we will see you in another two weeks. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. And we will be back. Thank you, Bye. Karen. Thanks, everyone. Bye.